Welcome to this IG Trading the Markets podcast, where we're examining the world of behavioral trading. Today, we're talking about finding alpha in a VUCA world. Before we get to find out what VUCA is and how it applies to a successful trading strategy, let's pick up first on the idea that we should approach trading with a conscious effort to be mindful of what we're trying to achieve and how we go about it. Let's introduce our guest, Ron William from Intensity. Ron, good to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Uh, let's begin, first of all, if we can, and ask the question, why is a market's mind, for want of a better expression, approach critical for successful traders? Hi, Jeremy. Great to be part of this podcast on such an important topic, uh, such as markets and mind. And to circle to your question, why is the mind approach so critical to successful traders? It's the build and end all. Um, certainly, that's been true in my own personal trading experience and with all the traders that I support and coach. And, and in that experience, it's, it's really an 80-20 rule, which applies to most thinking-based systems. And what that means is that 80%, i.e. the majority of why we do what we do as traders, investors, but also as human beings, is driven by the emotional part of the brain. And that's a big specialization that I'm, I'm doing a deep dive in at the moment in terms of the neuroscience of uh, behavior and trading specifically. Um, and a lot of the latest research is now uncovering what we already know to be true, that the mind, the subconscious mind, controls a big part of our behavior, which ultimately drives our trading decisions. Okay, let's take a look now in some more detail about the context of this in the current market volatility. We have to be mindful of the fact that um, many um, are positioning themselves potentially for some downside. We know that we've got volatility. We've seen a big uh, drop earlier on this year. How do the current volatile markets impact trading psychology? Yes, so volatility is clearly the big elephant in the room of 2020. Um, this is actually a, a, a topic I was, I was speaking about for some years now, especially in 2019, doing uh, global roadshows, specifically in Asia, all about how volatility is back and, and how uh, we need it then and certainly now uh, to prepare for that new environment. So in the here and now of, of VUCA pandemic, and volatility, the key question uh, that I think we are all uh, needing to ask ourselves is, what does it mean to us? Or what does it mean to you um, in terms of specifically risk, opportunity, or uncertainty? Each of these words are charged and loaded uh, with different meanings for different people. Um, and now, that's the psychology aspect. But if you put the psychology with the amplification effect of money, um, then, of course, that's when the pendulum starts to swing for a lot of traders and investors. And so the key driver there is whatever people's beliefs or values are. So, for example, if I'm a trader that sees volatility as high risk, big no-no, and I scare away from it, um, then that will definitely have a negative impact on my portfolio versus someone who maybe sees volatility as an opportunity. They'll be treating every big swing up or down. Um, as, a, as exactly that, an opportunity uh, to, to seek alpha in an up and down volatile market. So what then are the key principles of, of crisis opportunity? Yes, well, it's an interesting um, and partly philosophical principle, originally out of Asia um, and Asia culture. Uh, as, as I mentioned on, uh, at the beginning, uh, Asia is where I've been focusing much of my business uh, efforts recently. Um, and w when you're there, feet on the ground in Asia and particularly in China, um, it's, it's quite interesting just to learn the culture of, of the country and the region. Um, and the first thing that hit me pretty um, fast was this idea of duality. There is no one, one size that fits all. Uh, there's always this double-sided nature to both life and markets. Um, and so there's a, a Chinese philosophy uh, which was popularized in the West way back when um, in the uh, 1960s during the presidential term of John F. Kennedy, uh, which is all predicated on this idea of crisis opportunity. So the double-sided nature of, of both principles. And the quote of that time, if I can uh, recite it, as best as possible, the Chinese use two brushstrokes to write the word crisis. One brushstroke stands for danger, 
the other for opportunity. Now, here's the punchline. In a crisis, be aware of the danger. Don't ignore it, but recognize the opportunity. So, so it's this real intrinsic relationship between crisis, which gives birth to the opportunity, and certainly not letting the crisis blind us to the opportunity. That's that's the the core essence of of this principle, which is not just philosophical. It's, it's very practical, tangible investment um, uh, guidance. Um, and in Chinese philosophy, it's it's also part of the yin yang kind of energy balance of of both life and markets. It's interesting, isn't it? When we come up against a, a volatile trading pattern, sometimes uh, our best laid plans just get thrown out of the window and we go back to what our mind tells us are the basics. So I understand that we've got to take control and we've got to approach this in a methodical way. But I wanted to ask about the human trader survival mind key pain pattern, if you like, and how we go through this period where we find ourselves in a tight corner, or we find ourselves possibly, as you say, in a risky environment with opportunity we know lying ahead. How do we arrange our mind? How do we arrange our, our thought pattern to take us through that tight corner and emerge with a profitable outcome? So you hit the, the nail on the head there, uh, Jeremy. This is the million dollar question. And it is the million dollar question just because it's the biggest pain point to many of us um, in the market uh, for the simple reality that much of our pain points is biologically programmed in, in, in the human DNA. It's just how we are as human beings. And, and the whole reason behind that is, is down to survival 101. Um, when we were designed as human beings, and, and of course evolved traders as we hope to be, we are programmed for survival. It's a life or death program. Uh, now, in ancient times, this program was critical to staying alive and making sure that we're uh, running away from dangerous situations, like, for example, a caveman running away from a saber-toothed tiger. Um, that was then, ancient times. Now, the big paradigm is an ancient mind surviving in a modern world. And this modern world is just so complex on so many levels, you know, pandemic aside, it was complex way before then. Uh, it's just that much more now. Um, and so th the whole issue here is, you know, is this a biological jail sentence um, that, that we are just uh, doomed to buy, um, as some clients ask me? Or is it actually something that we can break through uh, by learning how to optimize it? And in my mind, Jeremy, this is something that we can optimize it, it's something I feel very passionate about. And certainly the key message that I'm sharing both in education opportunities like like the one uh, we're engaged in right now in this podcast, but also as part of um, a lot of performance coaching that I'm doing with traders and investors. And the first step really in that process is, is awareness, but then also uh, awareness of, of um, what happens to the mind when we're under stress and this whole idea of stress response management just think about it, you know, that market volatility uh, will trigger the survival mechanism in the body, uh, whether we like it or not. The question is, what do we do when we hit that reaction moment? Um, and part of the uh, issue that extenuates this whole situation is not just market volatility. Think about what we're doing on a day to day basis where the market chart has now turned into a pandemic chart. Uh, number of cases, you know, deviating up and down. Uh, swinging from one country to the next. This has become the norm. Um, and then, of course, we have political uh, swings. We have the U.S. elections coming up this year. Uh, we, we have market gyrations. We have pandemic, um, you know, fear factors being triggered every now and again. Even though I know we're going into normalization now, um, this is all creating excessive chronic stress. Um, and certainly stress response management, greater awareness of the mind, and an optimization strategy is key. Um, for anyone who wants to trade successfully. Okay, let's get back to the title of this podcast about uh, finding alpha in a VUCA world. What is VUCA? Well, VUCA is, is a, uh, originally a, a military, U.S. military acronym uh, coined at the back end of the Cold War. Um, and the idea is um, VUCA basically, in, in essence, is what do we do when the world turns upside down? What do we do when the world turns upside down? Now, if you break it down in terms of the um, letter by letter acronym, so VUCA, the V 
stands for volatility, the U, uncertainty, the C, complexity, and the A, ambiguity. And, and what that all means is volatility is exactly you know, what we know it to be. It's the uh, ebb and flow, the price swings uh, in the market. But what volatility brings is, is, is unpredictability and certainly the, um, the instability to our P&L and to our mindset uh, when volatility reaches an extreme. Now, good volatility tends to be uh, opportunistic uh, for, for many of the good traders out there, but too much of anything is exactly that. And so excessive volatility, like what we saw in March, where we had uh, 35% in just four weeks, um, was certainly excessive. And it's the shock factor of volatility. Remember, this isn't predicted volatility. This is unpredicted volatility. Um, Following on from that, uncertainty is certainly a byproduct of the high vol environment, um, and that's due to instability, unavailable information. And the issue here is a lot of the quanti people out there that are using models, as a case in point, will find that the sample test period that they would have done all of their back testing on just doesn't work anymore because we're now in a whole new sample um, uh, which which is very different uh, to any other experience that either a computer or, or, or a human trader would have experienced. And for that reason, the uncertainty begets uncertainty and, and creates a lot of problems uh, for people in, 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 the, uh, in the trading world. Now, complexity is, is, is really a layering process of all that I've just mentioned, volatility, uncertainty, then leads to complexity. And it really is a complexity uh, in terms of just understanding the cause and effect, but also in terms of mitigating the risk. It becomes too complex, uh, I think, for, for either machine or man um, to, to properly and, and sustainably understand. Um, one easy example of that is the supply uh, shock uh, breakdown that happened uh, post-pandemic. Remember, this this began way back when in, in Asia and then became global, uh, but in a short amount of time. I mean, just the average day person wanting to go shopping had to stand in a big line with a two meter social distance because of a supply side shock that triggered from a pandemic. I mean, who could imagine? Um, and so certainly the only time we would have understood such a complex chain of events would have been probably something like the Spanish flu in 1900s. Um, so it's, it's out of sample complexity that we will never understand um, in normal times, and that becomes um, an issue in itself. And then lastly, ambiguity. And th the key point with ambiguity is, is to actually not try and predict a, an ambiguous situation, but to actually just be in the present moment and to apply the strategy in a moment-by-moment -moment basis and, and just hit the reset button, really, because um, if we try and use past models in ambiguous times, we're just going to get unstuck. So, so why does it matter now? What is it about now that really this VUCA applies? Well, the, the, the big issue um, I find um, and the misconception I think that people are much too fast to make um, is they try and problem solve VUCA. They, they, many people I speak to, uh, certainly this year, uh, when they hear about VUCA for the first time, one of the first questions they ask is, outside what is it, the follow-up question is, well, how do we fix it? I mean, is there a, is an algorithm that solves VUCA? Um, is there something I can do to change VUCA? And sorry to say, the answer is no. Um, the, the one thing that we do change and can change um, is, is our strategy, our perception of a VUCA environment. And this is, I think, a lesson that many people have learned for themselves and hopefully will continue to in, in, in the time ahead. Um, it's really key that we try not to problem solve VUCA itself, i.e. the external environment, which is you know, the world turning upside down here and um, for the foreseeable future, at least as far as we know. What is key is that we actually just adapt to it and evolve. And so many industries are actually going through this um, very interesting um, and, and difficult uh, restructuring process where they're, they're having to decide live or die, you know, they have to adapt, optimize, reinvent themselves, or end up being, you know, part of the dinosaur story. So corporate story is actually quite an inter interesting um, metaphor uh, for what many traders and investors will need to do with their own strategies. Okay, so, so wrapping this up, how can we seek alpha in this VUCA environment? Yes, well, to keep it simple, um, th th there are three key strategies that, that I've, I've spent some time uh, reflecting on and developing and now teaching. Um, those three strategies um, are based on resilience, number one, 
Number two, divergent thinking. And number three, optionality. And just to give a, a quick summary of each of those three points, resilience, divergent thinking, optionality, resilience is, is a no-brainer. Uh, during difficult, volatile, VUCA times, and certainly a pandemic as, as a case in point, but then also the economic shutdown and now normalization um, and any other VUCA uh, experience, uh, does require resilience. And resilience, going back to our original start point, is a blend of markets and minds. So markets, um, we do, you know, even in an 80-20 model where 80% is psychology, 20% is mechanics, we still need to have successful mechanics in place uh, to, to make any kind of successful money in, in any market. And so that requires an all-weather investment process uh, with active market timing and risk management overlays. The all-weather part of what I've just described there is actually um, a principle developed by a, a successful hedge fund manager, uh, Ray Dalio, uh, that has published uh, quite a lot on this subject. Uh, and it's, um, it's a diversification play that he applies on his own hedge fund strategy. And, and he you know, now educates many other people to do the same. Active market timing, you know, the, the whole buy and hold argument worked well for as long as it did. But I think most traditional uh, passive investors are now opening their mind uh, to, to the benefit of, of adding some market timing, some tactical um, overlay um, in order, you know, at the very least to manage risk um, uh, and perhaps, you know, maintain some kind of an alpha edge where possible. Now, as part of the markets and mind focus, the mind side, uh, remember the 80-20 rule. So 80% is the mind, the behavior behind our investing and trading decisions. And so that does require greater self-awareness. Ignorance is not, I'll say it one more time, ignorance is not a bliss in this context. Uh, awareness is the name of the game um, and greater awareness for the trader or investor that really wants to, uh, to do well. Um, and that uh, allows uh, us to then start to do practical strategies like reducing uh, behavioral biases, improving stress response management, as mentioned um, earlier on. And then the last two points, divergent thinking and optionality. Divergent thinking uh, is just going back to uh, core principles of, of markets. Uh, nothing in markets or in life uh, is a certainty. Uh, it's all based on probabilities. This is certainly a driving force in my own trading strategy, and, and it gives me an edge in what I do. Um, but also in much of the work of um, a uh, successful uh, professor and fund manager called uh, Nassim Taleb, who has actually made money in, um, in this volatile environment, according to public record, um, he's partly done that because he actually trades probabilistically um, and tends to trade on, on um, and, and hedge on outlier risks, good and bad. And I think that's, that's a prudent thing to do for, for some of those aggressive uh, traders and investors out there uh, to at least hedge um, from a strategy point of view and, and maybe uh, try and uh, avoid putting um, all our eggs in one basket and, and to remain aware of different eventualities. And that finally takes us into the last point, optionality. Let's continue multiple scenario planning uh, based on past anomalies. Um, this is where we compare apples, not with apples, but apples with oranges. And if you remember, Jeremy, one of the uh, key charts that we've been looking at recently is multiple scenarios of bear market corrections, uh, something I called the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, that's just a, an educational uh, framework for all of us uh, to evaluate uh, the what if factor. What if we get a V-shaped recovery? What if we get a, a, a W-shaped recovery? And what if we get an L-shaped recovery? And right now, it's looking like, you know, this V might turn to a rolling W, time will tell. But, you know, it's not about being right or wrong. The key thing here is, is to at least test different multiple scenarios, uh, prepare ourselves based on past anomalies, um, and just, just basically uh, in that process uh, be more successful in in all that we strive to do indeed ron we'll, we'll have to leave it there but thanks indeed to, for joining us uh, seeking alpha in a vuca world you can catch up more with ron william he's from intensity uh, and um, he's a, a behavioral uh, trading um, specialist and also a trader himself that's ron william from intensity with us on today's ig trading the markets podcast
For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.